Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Fowl again. Today we are going to see what is network address translation. Uh, NAC. Network address translation so basic learning objective is configure NAT rule on a web and gateway servers how we can deliver that so let's start with introduction of NAT So network address translation NAT allows security administrator to overcome IP addressing limitations, allowing private IP addresses, a location and unregistered internal addressing schemes. Enterprise employ NAT for a variety of reasons, including private IP address use in internal networks, Limiting external network access, ease and flexibility of network administration. NAT can be used to translate either IP address in a connection, translating the IP of the machine initiating the connection, typically from the client side of connection, is called source NAT. And translating the IP address of the machine receiving the connection is called destination NAT. The security gateway support two types of NAT where the source and or the destinations are translated. So, number one is Hide NAT. What is Hide NAT? A many to one relationship where multiple computers on the internal network are represented by a single unique address. This enhances security because the connection can only be initiated from the protected side of the security gateway. This type of NAT is also referred as dynamic NAT. We will going to see in detail the process, but for now I'm just giving the definitions. And second type of NAT we have is static NAT. A one-to-one -one relationship where each host is translated to a unique address. This allows connection to be initiated internally and externally. An example would be web server or a mail server that need to allow con connection initiated externally. So NAT can be configured on checkpoint hosts, nodes, networks, address ranges and dynamic objects. NAT can be configured automatically or by creating manual NAT rules. We are going to see that part. Manual NAT rules offer flexibility because it can allow the translation of both the source and destination of packets and allow translation of services. So this is what basic introduction of NAT, what we have with the checkpoint firewall. And if you see, if you go to the security policy, you will see there is an entire tool base for NAT purpose. Here. 
and if you click to it you will see all the networks but before that let's understand what is ip addressing ip addressing this is basic but we need to understand in an ip network each computer is assigned a unique ip address because public ip address are very expensive and many enterprises they choose to use a private ip addresses for their internal networks so we have a class ranges for private ip addresses address allocation for a private networks if you see there are classes class a in class a we have a range 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. to 10.255 There is a class B. Class B have a range 172, 16, 0 0.0 to 172, 31, 255, 255. And there is class C, which has a range. 192, 168, 0 0.0 to 192, 168, 255, 255. So these are the private IP range, right? Now let's understand what is hidenet okay uh, let me open word pad for you to understand this process so let's understand what is hidenet so consider this diagram this is your gateway, security gateway. And the packet, this is your original packet, which will go into cross the security gateway. So this is your original packet. This packet has a range or has a field. One is your IP port, one is your source, one is your destination. So, your port is any port, you can say random port. The source consider for now 10.1.1.101 and consider your destination 192.168.100.10. Right? So now this packet will flow in this direction. And there is some mnemonics. I give it as I. And let me create one more block here. This is also a packet here is IP port. Then here is the source and then destination. 
port i will put it like 21531 source 172 168 i mean let me put it this way the source will be 172 21101.1 and destination is 192 one say 9.100 dot 10 and when the packet will come out it will give you some dynamics here right so consider this uh, IP address schema your source where the packet is originating is 10.1.1.101 destination where uh, the packet uh, need to go uh, 192.9.100.10 uh, and the other side the destination which we are trying to reach is 192.9.100.10 and the source from the other side is 172.21.101.1. This is a basic diagram. So in HeightNet, the source is translated. The source port is modified and translation occurs on the server side. So if you see the IP address 10.1.1.101 going to destination 192.9.100.10 as the packet hits to the interface so this point at the packet hit to this point we call it pre in which denotes with small i it is processed by the firewall kernel so whatever the packet hit to the firewall we call it as a pre in stage pre in stage and here onwards the packet is processed by firewall kernel and it forwarded to post in stage so here this is the post in stage which we call b guy this stage we call it post in stage b guy where it is then routed to the external interfaces. So this is very important when we do the troubleshooting. So when you, when the first packet hits to the firewall interface, you will get pre in stage. Uh, the packet is processed by the kernel. Then it goes to the next posting stage where we will see this uh, big I mnemonics. And where, when you see this, it means that the packet is routed to the external interface. We're talking about the hide net. Now, the, the packet will arise to the next stage, which is a small O. We call it as a pre-out stage. With where the actual netting takes place. So pre out stage small o if you see in your debug it means the natting is getting take place and then is processed by the nat rules as we will see then firewall modifies the source port and adds the port information to the state table whatever the state table it will generate internally 
a packet translate on a post out stage day. Then once everything is done, the packet is reached to the TCP IP stack for the outside interface, which node post out. 